Hello, and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And, and I'm delighted that you're joining me here. Although joining me here is, is rather odd given the topic of today's session, which is really about exploring what are the alternatives to perhaps the usual Teams, Zoom, Google Meet, WebEx kind of experiences that we've all been living through over the last 18 months or so. Although I have to say, I spend a lot of my time online and a lot of friends and family are spread around the globe. So I, I find it quite, this is, this is normal for me. <laughs> this, is, this is how I've kept in touch with people over the years. But I do know that there are other ways of, of reaching out to people and connecting with people. And that technology has been around for a fairly long time. So I do have a few slides. I've limited myself to, to 10 today because Jason always complains when I use a lot of slides. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is my slide deck today. Right. So I've called it through the looking glass. And, and primarily it's just a you know a nod to, to Alice as she stepped through the screen because we're used to video conferencing and all that entails. The the camera, the row of faces, um, oops, <laughs> and we can see the benefits that that's brought to us over the last 18 months, connecting with people, talking with people, being able to deliver the learning and teaching. But there are alternatives to this that have been around for a while. And perhaps one of the most popular is this idea of virtual reality, <clears throat> of actually an immersive space where you can actually meet people in a slightly more realistic setting, potentially giving you the option to carry out more practical tasks, perhaps, um, to feel more connected with the people in that, albeit virtual room. So we're going to look at other worlds. And what I've done is I've chosen three environments that I've played with recently, some longer than others. And, and I, I just want to share what I think about those environments, what they're bringing. And also I want to say that these environments have been introduced to me by other academic users who've been using it to teach, mostly to experiment. Uh, some have stuck with it, some have played it with it for a couple of sessions, but they, they've had a mix of experiences. So I would say, <laughs> first of all, a disclaimer, I've been here before. <laughs> um, in fact, in 2008 in the University of Stirling, I set up a, a conference called Virtual Worlds. And at that time, the thing that everyone was talking about that was going to change the world, change education forever, was Second Life. Second Life was this kind of VR immersive space and literally everyone was jumping into this. Um, when I set the conference up, I, I put out a call for papers. And I, I think I received, if, if it was like 160, 170 papers for people who wanted to come and present at the conference. And, and from that, I chose 24 presentations. Now, I, I would say the majority of those were basically just people meeting around a virtual campfire. <laughs> and, and at that time, because Second Life had voice, but text chat was more reliable, what you found was people would come into a, a, a virtual space and, and text chat to each other quite a lot. That, that was quite a lot of Second Life interaction, but the virtual space was, it was really interesting. I mean, there was a lot going on here and, and I, I managed to pull out this old um, part of the program. So we were running like 10 parallel sessions in the morning. And I remember like free, <laughs> free, free me from my Second Life. That, that was from St. Andrews, um, featured uh, a presenter, Chris Getchell, who's now at Fife College, um, who was talking about open sim, an alternative to Second Life to get past some of the limitations of that. Um, the second one, uh, Daniel, uh, who's, who's now Glasgow School of Art, he had developed this really interesting tie up between Moodle and Second Life that allowed you to go into Second Life um, interact with, with your peers, but also then carry out assessment activities, which were actually uh, a, a portal into middle. So you could do assessment tasks and they were graded. 
there, there was lots of things in here. Um, every, everything from like kind of gaming adventures, dentist, yes, there was a dentist thing. Um, Thinking Worlds was that platform. It was a free platform that, that people were starting to use and develop different things with. Um, spinning rubber ducks, floating lizard lounges, and giddy up. <laughs> um, I, I think that was from Harriet Wall. <laughs> There were, there, there were a range of topics, everything from people acting in the space, people doing really interesting things. There, there was one particularly good example. I mean, there were a few. There was one where they really used the environment. You, you teleported into the area and you were a wheelchair user. And the environment, which you weren't allowed to fly around, you had to navigate through buildings and barriers that people in wheelchairs face every day but aren't immediately obvious to us. Um, but playing this game, you, you became aware of issues like heights of counters, stairs, uh, <laughs> the width of doorways. And it, 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 was, it was interesting. It was a really interesting application of, of really what virtual reality could be. And at, at, at the time, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, predictions made about what it would do in education. And, and just because usually Jason is here with us in these sessions today, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't miss him out <laughs> because he couldn't attend today. He, he was actually presenting um, at the conference around the legal aspects of virtual worlds. So I, I just had to throw in a mention. One of two, which I'll be making today for Jason. Um, but it, it, it would have been interesting to hear what he thinks of virtual worlds then and now. So um, carrying on from that, Let's, let's just explore some of the things that I've been looking at in terms of, of environments. And, and when I talk about virtual reality, um, there, there are many meanings to that, very extremes, as I suppose, the whole kind of headset thing in a virtual world. And I think probably that doesn't apply to most people. So some of the things I said about today's session was I was looking for connections, meeting spaces, alternatives to Zoom that A, didn't cost well, anything uh, other than standard kit somebody would have to typically interact from a distance. So I'm assuming here that you have some kind of desktop, laptop, or mobile device, uh, you have which has a camera and has a, a mic and speakers of some kind or, or headphones. So that's the limitation. And every, every environment that I'm looking at today can accommodate at least 20 participants for free within that space. So this is, this is one that I came across, um, which was being experimented with in the University of Aberdeen. Um, it, it started out as this free thing called uh, the online town. Now the online town is, uh, it's interesting. These three guys uh, from California started programming, like they were really interested in connecting people from a distance and they were looking at persistence and how do you work together and how do you stay together while being apart and they, they've come up with a whole range of different technical solutions um, all of which they release for free they all put the code as open source they let anyone pick up and develop their code they're, they're a really interesting bunch of guys but they what they started out one possibly their most successful thing is this thing called online town which has morphed into something called Gather. Now, Gather, to, to a certain extent, is just like Teams and Zoom. It features, as you can see, video calling, video spaces, but it has some slight subtle differences to encourage slightly more immersion and some kind of natural spacing um, within it to carry out conversations. And so, Primarily, if we take a look, so I created an account later in good Blue Peter fashion. And once you create an account, basically you don't have a fancy 3D space. You create the account for free. This one, allow, a free account allows you up to 25 users simultaneously to come in. Um, you, when you log in, you can create a character. Now I'm, I'm not sharing my, my camera here and my, my mic will be off because I'm using it for Zoom. You create whatever cartoonish character you want to have and you join the gathering. Now, in this, uh, I've, I've disabled my, my mic and my, 
my mic and my camera. Okay, so this is this is me. <laughs> this so takes me back to like Super Nintendo, like so many years ago. Oh, it was a golden age of gaming. Um, <laughs> now you have a character that is in a room that you can design and you, you have a number of templates that people share, but you can basically create rooms um, and objects. And in inside these rooms, these various objects have interactions. So if you go up to a screen, uh, press X, then it'll give you like a, this is a live data feed as an example of, you know, a sample company, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, you can pull in, they, they've pulled in a lot of of open source and free um, areas that allow you to do things like collaborate on a document, uh, share a document, um, write it. What are we? And everybody who's in that particular room um, can obviously share. Now, th that's um, nothing new. So the thing that's different in this particular application, and you can share files, you can drop your own files in here, you've got writing spaces that you can collaborate on, etc. It, it It's quite an interesting space. Um, but, and it, it's got a nice tutorial if you sort of play through it for a while. But why, why would I, what do I like about this? Well, when you have more people in this space, and how you get people in is if I invite some people in. So you can invite people in by either giving them, sending them an email directly, which will give them a link into your space. You can say how long that they'll be allowed to stay in that space. Uh, so we'll just say like one hour. Uh, or, or you can copy the link itself. Now I'm, I've set up another PC. So I'm putting in this link. And if I log into uh, another PC, I will click on that link and see if it launches on another computer so I can get uh, another me in here. Now, if I then put, go back to my town. Oh, oh, where am I? Where am I? There we go. So I'm done inviting people. So I've invited someone uh, who's going to join the gathering and he's just appeared. It, 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 it is just me, by the way. Um, let's see if I can find me. Oh, there we are. So that, that's me. Now, as soon as I come into proximity of me, my, my, my other video and my voice sort of activates on, the, on this account. So it, it's kind of spatially aware. As I wait, move away from people, like I can't talk to them, but when I'm near them, um, I can suddenly chat and interact. And then in, in these spaces, they have like defined areas that are um, like private meeting spaces. So if you only want to have four people in a conversation, then you go to these chairs. Um, if you want, otherwise, if, you're, if anyone's near you, they'll, they'll hear what you're talking about and they'll, they'll share different items. Um, they have this kind of uh, large meeting space here. Uh, which uh, if, if we both go to here uh, with a number of tables that sets itself up to, if you want to present to a larger group, then the main person sits in a podium space and then he can broadcast or she can broadcast anything out to everyone in that space. So it has a, a lot of different dynamics. Um, and you can see from this screen, I'm, I'm just moving my head around because I have my camera in front of my icons. You can do things like... Um, share your screen or a window or a presentation or anything with the group. And it, and it has all the same kind of functionality, but it just has a slightly different level of immersion given this kind of interface. Now, on, honestly, um, <laughs> in Aberdeen, the students liked it when, when they first used it, um, from what I understand. Um, but there was an element of novelty there. Uh, and I... I because it hasn't been used for a significantly long period of time, I'm, I'm intrigued to see if, if that sort of holds true for a longer period. I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but this is gather time and it's, it's possibly, possibly worth a look. Right, so if I go back to my 
sites. So gather time and, and definitely have a look at what the guys from uh, the online town have done because their story and, and the different things they're looking at about video presence and people working together is really interesting. And again, they, they just give everything out for free. All right, another thing I was looking for then, um, after gather town <laughs> is moving forward. Uh, and this is, this is a session that's being demonstrated today. Uh, at a conference that, that Walter has ducked out of, uh, the Vet TED conference. Um, this has been around for quite a while. Has, has anyone here come across this before? Uh, Hubs by Mozilla? No? So it, it probably started about two, two, three years ago now. So this is kind of Mozilla's foray into 3D spaces. Um, and one of their key elements was that it was to be platform agnostic, if, if you're on a phone, if you're on a headset, if you're on a browser, whatever device it is, you could jump into a space and start um, communicating, sharing, running events. They have, it, well, everything in this equally is open source. They opened up the other code. Other companies have taken the code, built on it and developed other commercial products from this. But Mozilla continued to sort of develop this area. So. Looking at hubs then, so going back into this, if I, <laughs> if I leave my, my, my poor, if I go home, go home, there we go. Uh, and we go to have a look at what, oops, uh, hubs is. Okay, so hubs, here's hubs. Hubs by Mozilla. Again, it's completely free. You get up to 25 people for free in a room. Um, I create an account through Gmail, email, whatever you want. Uh, and when you create a room, you basically, you can choose from a, a number of scenes. So uh, it starts you off in this kind of default space uh, and I will keep my mic off. So here we are, here's, here's, here's a hub. And, and to, to a lot of people, if, you, if you've used a Quest or a, a personal room, these spaces are, are pretty familiar. Um, there's, there's nothing that different about them. You, you, you can move around, you can build objects in it. Uh, if you want, you can, um, let's see, you can change the kind of room that you're in. So uh, I, keep, I keep forgetting which, which one changes the room. I, I do this, <laughs> jump into so many spaces. <laughs> um, I'll work that out in a second. Right, so in this space, you can um, you know, do the usual thing, share your camera, share your screen. Uh, you can play, pick up objects and drop them in. In, in a previous version, you, you used to be able to just drop PDFs and PowerPoints and videos. You can still drop videos in there um, and you can drop objects, but it's slightly slightly more convoluted. The space is all right. It's, it's a bit reminiscent of Second Life for me. Um, in terms of controlling the space, uh, I'll, I'll jump in with another character in a second. Th there, there are interesting elements to it. So for example, if you are not happy with this space, um, I'm determined to find, how do I, how do I put in uh, a, a new room, room info and settings? Oh, there we go, look. So if I change the scene, like you get this massive range of, of different environments that people have made. Um, and, and there's a ton to choose from. And as, as a student, th there's interesting things like Mozilla um, developed this, this other platform called Spoke. So they've got the hubs <laughs> and originally enough, they came up with Spokes. And with Spokes, you can actually, you have a whole 3D authoring environment where you can play around, you can create objects and create your own custom look. You can pull in free 3D objects, you can create your own. Um, for the avatars that you have here, so this this funny sort of default robot avatar, I think I'm a fox in the actual room. You can, they've built a tool where you can just create a simple skin and import your own character into, into hubs itself, which is awesome. You know, it, it's a good, it's a simple thing to, that works. You don't need to download anything. It just runs through your browser. You can download an app directly to your desktop if you want. It's it's just it's no more reliable than the browser version. It works best in Chrome or obviously Mozilla Firefox. Um, and if you want to invite someone, 
you just simply send them an invite or give them a code to pass on. So for this code, if I, for example, jump into my phone and I type in 4111186. Oh, no, no. Let me try that again. Oh, it's like I can't count. By the way, you can totally unmute yourself and just throw in disparaging remarks as I continue to not impress with my keyboard skills for one. Eight, six. Eight, six. Done. Right. Okay. Benji. Yes. I noticed that there's an iframe embed code. There, oh, yes, yeah. So with hubs as well, yeah. You can drop a meeting space directly onto a website and just have people drop into it all the time, um, which is totally awesome. Um, I, mean, I mean, it's it's really flexible. So like, I've, I've got another character in, in, my, in my room. Uh, where did I put it? I have put it near here. Let's see if I can find myself. <laughs> it's like a whole exploration. Uh, oh, there I am, there I am. Oh, it's me. You, you can't see this, but I'm waving to myself on the screen. Or maybe you can see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm a panda. Now, to be honest, like these things, oh, this is a teleport jump. So if you're far away and you don't want to move, you can you can jump directly to an area. Um, it's a bit cartoonish, to be fair. It's not, you know, it, it, it's all right, but it's a bit childlike and a bit game-like. And, and I'm not entirely sure that's wholly appropriate for everything that you want would want to do. Um, Again, it's a bit like a novelty than anything else. Um, but again, you know, I'm using it on a phone. Uh, I'm, I'm a fox. Oh, I'm a red fox. Uh, that would make sense with the Firefox. Um, I mean, you can use it. It's easy. You can jump into it straight away. It just, it just works. I, it's been the most reliable of all the platforms that I've been sort of playing with. It's, it's definitely, it's fun in that sense. Um, it's definitely accessible and it's a step up from Gather Town in the sense that it is a 3D space. Right, okay, time, time is pushing on. So uh, let me see, uh, back to, I should really get these whole <laughs> presentation things uh, much more slick. But um, the last one I want to have a, a look at as, as an idea of these spaces. And I'll, I'll say something about what I think of these spaces at the end. Is something called spatial. So, has, has, has anyone experienced spatial before? No, not so much. <laughs> um, spatial, then. So, typically, here's one that I made earlier. Spatial is, uh, again, it's a 3D uh, space, um, but it's slightly more sophisticated than the others. I suppose this is going for the whole VR headset kind of look. It's It definitely is aiming towards a kind of corporate market and an educational market. It's interesting because it does talk about this idea of mixing a real presence, uh, but you can also pull in people with webcams as well. So it, it caters for multiple platforms. Um, it's It's again, it's free. You can have up to 25 people in it. It has a lot of interesting sort of simple collaborative features in it. But then, you know, is it is it really what you want? I don't know. I don't know. But let me show you a bit of Spatial. So I create a, a free account. Oh, oh, so the big thing about Spatial. Okay, this is, is, is a thing I should mention. Um, the big thing about Spatial is that it tries to, to put you into it. <laughs> Please don't laugh. Um, <laughs> um, so in Spatial, it allows you to take a picture of yourself and then it, <laughs> it wraps that picture onto an avatar and puts that avatar in into the space. Uh, it's pretty easy. Like my my I think it's my camera, my camera's on just now. So if can I can I stop my video? Right, okay. So if I stop my video, you'll see how how, how it works. So if I want to create uh, a new 3D avatar. I have my face and <laughs> take a picture. 
<laughs> Looks good. See, I, I feel it's talking directly to me. It's doing it's a wonderful boost to my ego. Um, I could believe it. Uh, I'm, I'm, let's, I'll, I'll be this rugged gentleman today. <laughs> and it basically just wraps that picture on, on your face. And then as soon as you've got that, that's you done. You can basically start jumping into rooms and inviting people in and to talk. And how it how it presents your avatar is basically um, a shoulder set. So it allows you to see your arms and your face. So this 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 is that is really not an improvement, is it? <laughs> uh, I'll say okay. Looks good. Looks good. Fine. 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 That's it. I'll stick with that. <laughs> if I go into uh, a room now, what will it what will it look like? Um, <laughs> I, I I have no idea. Here we go. Oh right, I can join now. I can join, <laughs> and this is my space. So you, I, again, you, you get a whole bunch of different spaces that you can work with. The brainstorming one's nice because it it basically allows you to access a number of like post-it note tools, writing tools, and the post-it note tools are actually quite good. So this is me in the space. But what, what you really want to see is what happens when somebody else comes into that space. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's different. So this is me. Uh, I can do the same as soon as you're in proximity of somebody else, the, the audio kicks in so you can start talking to people. You can bring in these webcams, which is really interesting. So it opens up the possibility that people can use, you know, different kind of platforms to access the space and you don't necessarily have to be 3D. Now, to get the full experience though, what you really want is, is well, to go full hog. Now I said, like, you don't have to buy anything to, to get into these spaces and, and they are all free, but they do sort of accommodate other, other ways of interacting with the space. And the one that you, you, you probably hear most about is, um, is, is VR in terms of the whole headset thing. Now it's, oh, it's not giving you back my camera. Oh, but you can still see me in the top of the screen. Right, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this space. Um, as as somebody else uh this time uh i i'm gonna wear a headset my headset doesn't fit in with my my uh, earphones so hopefully if you're speaking to me i will hear you now i can see absolutely nothing uh which is a bit disconcerting um but i do have uh, a headset right so i'm i'm in my space and i am going to go join me in the room uh, I'm connecting. Oh, it says hang tight. I'm almost there, and I am in there. <gasps> uh, right. Okay. I'm 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 muted in the game. Oh, in the game in in the session. But uh, let's see if I can find me. Yes. Okay. Now I have put me in here, uh, and I. Oh, there we go. So this is me. Hello, and. Hopefully, I can't see anything just now because I'm me, but I've, <laughs> I can move my arms and I can, I can kind of interact, I suppose. I can point at people. Um, and, <laughs> and this experience is, it, it, I suppose, immersive in a sense. Um, if It's a very disconcerting view of me. If I were able to interact with me, we could shake hands and talk and Perhaps virtually hug. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's very hard to do this by yourself. But it's it's a space, and it's and it, I, I suppose it is more together. And if 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 you did rush out and buy a silly amount of money on on these kind of VR things, then maybe the experience is better. So let me just put that aside for now, <clears throat> and <laughs> come out of that space. And go back to my slides. So those those are the three areas that I've I've looked at. Um, and let me see if I can get my possibly. Oh, I'm back. Right, <clears throat> spatial. So there's three sets. I'm I'm sure I could have run that better. We can go into one of these areas just after this because 
you, there's no barrier to entry. Basically, if you have a link, you can just come in and it will just run through your browser. But what, what do I think of this? I mean, it's been 13 years since we had the virtual world conference um, back in 2008. And have, have these spaces really evolved much? You know, are, are they useful? Are, are they going to be a, an alternative to Teams and Zoom that we've been experiencing with our students? One of the key elements with students is we talk continuously about engagement about presence, about the need for that human aspect of contact. So does virtual reality or e e even in a 2D sense or a whole immersive headset sense, do these add anything to the experience to make that any more real and any more sticky in the sense of just keeping them with us? Um, well, in, in my view, I think the technology is definitely pushed on, it's it's evolved like headsets. That wasn't around 13 years ago, or it was, but experimental things for like ridiculous amount of money. So that's moved forward. In terms of cost, uh, initially when this stuff came out, it was just ridiculous money that no one would reach. Today, I suppose it is more affordable. Um, the fact that you can access all of these spaces for free is incredible. Um, the fact that a lot of this code is open source means that it's accessible to a number of companies and institutions who want to host and run it themselves. Um, even if you go into the kit, I suppose you've got Google VR glasses, cardboard, whatever, buy a cheap set for five pounds out of your pound land, which is always confusing, um, or, or, or spend, you know, two, three hundred pounds on a Facebook headset or whatever the latest technology happens to be. I, it, it's, it's definitely affordable. It's better. It's more accessible. Value, at the end of the day, honestly, it's a bit, it's still a bit gimmicky for me. I, I enjoy the experiences. Like I, I am a tech person. Like I have headsets. I have, I play in VR for years. I play games um, and I enjoy the experience. I regularly meet with my friends online all the time. And we, we talk, we play, we work. You know, I, I work from a distance. I taught a distance learning school. All those things work. But I found that the experience of using Zoom and Teams is actually not that bad. It's become like Skype for me was just a regular thing. I It's become normal. I can, if I need, help with something I, I just I just Skype them or call them or or send a team's call or, or or zoom sometimes or meet now now in Windows 10 uh, Skype has a built-in meet now function which you can just sort of send a link to somebody and start talking to them immediately I mean admittedly Skype which is really owned by Windows and should have known better and started a few years ago you know that, that would have been nicer a bit slow but all of this stuff is normal now and I I find that the technology is pretty much not just good enough, but so normalized for me that although headsets and VR technology have, have pushed ahead, like really improved over time, I find this to be enough. I, I like talking. Like I, I met Leonard for the first time today. Leonard, I mean, that's like, I see your hands. They don't have to be virtual or we don't have to like, do that thing like I, I I would enjoy talking to you and I haven't spoken to Jackie in ages and 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 Walter you know it, I I still find that connection I think the camera quality is so good audio is excellent you know that th these spaces for me to communicate to teach to 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 work this is this is good for me I'm I'm okay here I'm happy but my final point is VR w would I discount it completely well no no because Look, look at those projects about the people who build VR spaces about what um, climbing up to the top of a wind turbine to, to do maintenance and things like that. Pfft, that's, that's stunning. I, th I think if you've got VR with a real specific purpose in mind, um, that you can do practical things that you couldn't easily do otherwise, or that gives you an element of training before you do the actual thing at almost little or zero cost, then those are fantastic. Uh, access to virtual labs that JISC is working on. Um, Microsoft is working on its new mesh sort of platform, which is their AR augmented reality thing. That's really interesting. Um, I, I, I've been attending lecturers in Engage, 
which do practical demonstrations in a 3D space where, where you have real practical applications and a reason for doing it in 3D. It's, it's good, it's worth exploring and there's a ton of good stuff out there. Otherwise, as for the rest of our virtual bridge sessions, I'll be sticking to Zoom. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, virtual bridge session. For those of you um, watching on YouTube, um, <laughs> we'll be continuing the conversation here. But uh, until next time, please stay safe.